everybody welcome back so in this module we're going to continue with our discussion of our shiny and we're going to be building another shiny app uh, but we're going to be digging into this concept of reactivity a little bit more okay reactivity is basically the idea that the app dynamically updates based on user input uh, every shiny app has an element of reactivity uh, so in the last app that we built that occurred in the context of the render plot function uh, but we might also want to add additional elements of reactivity by using functions like the reactive function. And that's what we're going to be doing in this lesson. We're going to be using the reactive function to add two reactive elements uh, to our plot. Okay, so let me go ahead and just show you what we're going to be doing here. So this is the app that we're going to be building. Um, we're going to take data from the st louis federal reserve database it's an api that includes data on uh just about any economic indicator you can think of for the u.s and also uh for other countries as well uh, so i encourage you to check that out but we're going to be using it to build this simple app where the user can uh, select an indicator related to the health of the economy so um so here we have the indicators that they can select so that's one element of reactivity and then those are going to be graphed and then um, in a line chart and then the other element of reactivity is the date so they can select the user can select what date range they want to look at um, and explore more closely a specific date range okay all right um, the other thing i want to point out about this is you see these little um, rectangles here these gray rectangles that's uh recession shading so each of those rectangles indicates a period of economic recession so this is a very common feature of graphs that you might see in the wall street journal or yahoo finance um, where they have a trend in an economic indicator and then these recession this recession shading along with that in the background all right um, so for the recession shading you're going to be accessing way down at the bottom of the lesson um, this uh, this helper script here all right um, and i'm not going to go into details about what all's in there but basically you just need to make an r script out of this code and store it in your uh, in your shiny app project um, so that the app can access it as a helper script okay um so before you uh get started in this lesson you'll also uh want to go and uh, get yourself a fred api key uh you want to install fred r which is um how we're going to be accessing the the fred uh database through r um and you also want to install ecm which is going to be used in the helper function for the recession shading and shiny widgets okay um all right, so once you've got all of that installed, uh, you should be ready to go uh, and start building this app. So what we're gonna do in the rest of this video is just build out the setup portion of the code, and then in the next video, we'll work on the UI, and then in the video after that, we'll work on the server function, and then we'll launch the app locally, all right? So let's go ahead and start a new project. Go to File, go to New Project, uh click new directory click shiny application hit browse and uh, determine some place that you want to save this uh, project i'm going to put it in this data viz underscore 2102 folder here that i have on my desktop and uh, and then just name uh name the the project whatever you want or the directory whatever you want to call it i'll call this um fred underscore app and hit create project okay and then we have our app.r um, file and some you know starter code uh, one thing i'd suggest you get out of the way right away is just go ahead and start a new r script all right and save it as uh we'll do save as um, and call this helper.r okay then go back to the course website scroll down to the bottom 
and copy this code here from the course website and paste it here into helper.r okay and this is going to be the helper script for the recession shading and you should see that appear now here in your fred underscore app or whatever you've called this folder um, this project folder all right um, and it says ecm's not installed um, so i must have updated r recently and not installed this so go ahead and update it go ahead and install it and then uh, while that's going on we'll go back to our app.r okay and let's go ahead and get started with our code and we'll just go ahead and delete all this out um, and we will start by loading our packages and we're going to load shiny first of all and we're going to load fred r for the api we're going to load dplyr r and we are going to load ggplot2 Right. And then what you need to do next is to set your FRED API key. All right. And the way you're going to do it is you're going to do FRED R set underscore key. And then you're going to put in here your API key. Okay. Your FRED API key. All right. I'm not going to do it that way because I'm doing a video here and I don't want everybody to know my API key. So I'm going to go ahead and cut and paste some special code in here. Um, what I've done here, basically I have saved my API key as an environmental variable. So that way I can make my code public in a repo or in a video without worrying about somebody, um, you know, using my API key. All right. Um, so, so that is that. And next we're going to assign uh, Fred series to objects, uh, meaning that uh, we are going to assign the codes for the variables that we want to retrieve from the Fred database. We're going to store those in objects. Okay, so we're going to have a consumer confidence index, a business confidence index, composite lead indicator, uh, all three of those are uh, OECD data that are published by Fred. And then uh, the unemployment rate and the growth rate, uh, which are public data, you know, published by the US government. Um, okay, so we'll start with the consumer confidence index. So CCI, and uh, I'm gonna type the code for that. So uh, actually, let me just cut and paste this to make it quick. All right, so this is the code for CCI. All right, and then BCI is the business confidence index. And the FRED code for that is this. These are not straightforward, uh, but we do need to do this. And then um, our composite lead indicator is this here and then unemployment rate is easy unemployment unemployment underscore rate or unemp underscore rate is just unrate All right and then growth is this one here All right the rate of economic growth uh, rate of growth uh, in GDP all right, so uh, next we want to save a start date and an end date that we can use later on when we want to specify the start and end date for the retrieval of the different indicators. Um, so we're going to tell Fred, you know, uh, the period that we want to pull these data from. And we're also going to use these uh, for that slider uh, at the bottom of the plot that users are going to uh, manipulate to select a date. We need a start date and an end date for that. So set start and end date. All right, start date. And we're going to use the base R as date uh, function here. It's the simplest way to do it. We could use Lubridate2, the Lubridate package, uh, which is part of the tidyverse, but 
I don't think we need that here necessarily. It might be overkill. So uh, end date as dot date. Sorry, this is. Uh, let me go back and fix that in a second. And here we're just going to use the system date, right? The date on our machine. Sys dot date um, with these parentheses, right? The sys dot date function. Um, all right, and we're using the as dot date function because we want to store these as dates. All right, in case that's not obvious. All right, now uh, we're going to create a list of named values for the input selection, just like we did for the last app. We need to have um, you know, a set of values to populate that drop-down menu, and we need that you know, the items in the drop-down menu to refer to the objects that we just saved. All right, so that when a user clicks on that item, it retrieves this data, right? Uh, okay, so here we're going to create a list called vars. This should look familiar to you by now. Um, and the first one's going to be consumer confidence. And that equals uh, CCI. All right. And then second one is business confidence. equals BCI and then the next one is composite indicate oops let me do this and then also it doesn't like that I don't have a closing parentheses there so let me do that hopefully uh, yeah that should resolve that, but let's keep going here. Um, so composite indicator equals CLI, all right, and comma. The next one is unemployment rate equals on M underscore rate, comma. And then finally growth rate equals growth. All right. All right. And we can do it like that. All right. So we, now we have a nice list. Okay. So that's done. And then the last thing we're going to do for the set of code is just to load our helper script. All right. And here say load helper script and this is going to be again for that recession shading that we want to include in the chart helper dot r all right and uh, we've already created that file at the very beginning of this video um, so that will load that script um, so that we can access that function to create the re recession shading later on all right so that's it for the setup. And in the next lesson, we're going to work on the, uh, on the code for the user interface. I'll see you there.